Welcome to the Hangry Games Arena, where Kelly Brewster, the author of What's Eating You and host of the Hangry Games, is shaking up the weight loss world. She's providing you with tons of resources and helpful tips to obtain your long-term wellness and weight loss goals once and for all. The Hangry Games is recorded and produced at Open Space Studios. Welcome back, Hangry Game Nation. It is so good to be back with you guys. Uh, I, we took a little break for East, for a Good Friday, which was, as you know, much needed. I hope everyone had a great Easter holiday, that you had some really good church, maybe had a little crawfish, and maybe a chocolate egg, hopefully not two. Maybe you got to chill out and watch the Masters. Hint, hint. That's what we did, folks. Um, I'm sure whatever you did, though, you enjoyed time with family and friends, and that is what it's all about. However, did the holiday have you feeling a bit like a chubby bunny and just kind of making sure like you kind of slipped a little bit, maybe tripped a little bit? Well, then I have just the episode for you. A couple of weeks back, we did air the episode on um, slips, trips, and pitfalls, identifying any lapses and hopefully preventing any relapses in your weight loss and wellness journey. Look, it's one thing to have an occasional treat meal, okay, or even fall off the wagon and have a cheat meal. However, when you actually, nobody, nobody got time for an endless spiral into reactive and negative food choices that can leave you kind of at the intersection of frustrated and like whatever. All right. So we don't have any time for that, right? Okay. So make sure you watch that episode and kind of get linked in so that we can avoid some slips, trips, and pitfalls. Okay. All right. I'm off my soapbox, whatever. All right. Today I am pumped. I'm not just pumped. I am bump you up pumped. I mean, super pumped. Okay. Because not only to, is today the official launch of my book, What's Eating You, but today I get to spend some great quality interrogation, I mean, interviewing time <laughs> with two of my favorite individuals in all the world. Our guest speakers, a lot like you guys, have a testimony, a storyboard of sorts that brought them to the point of resolve, that aha moment. And today we're going to talk about not just the point where the ship begin to turn, but we're really going to delve into how prepping in all makes and models has impacted their journey along the way. I have in the studio today, my sister, Tracy Evans, and my brother-in-law, Lamar Evans. And I am just overwhelmed with excitement to jump into our topic with them today. Tracy is an incredible woman. She is a mother of two awesome young adults. Um, she is currently the executive director of development for several academic units at LSU. She is often on the go, and she may be able to shed some light for you guys that are have these high demand positions where you're also very mobile, like you're traveling a lot and things like that. And I think she'll be able to help you with some of those things. And she has, through the course of her life, like she, she's had many ups and downs, and she's going to talk about this. Um, she's been on that merry-go-round, and she's going to candidly share some of her accomplishments and even the obstacles in her weight loss journey. Now, Lamar... He has an athletic background. He played collegiate, collegiate football um, at USL. See, it's not ULL, it's USL, but whatever. And much like me, when the burners were turned off and the day-to-day -day stressors moved in, then the weight management became an all-too-familiar subject of conversation. Currently, he is a process control automation technologist at Olin, and he manages computer automation of the plant, code, and hardware. You probably heard... Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> but in his words, he basically sits on his butt a lot and he stares at a computer screen. <laughs> I know there are many of you guys out there that can relate to this. He too will provide a great perspective of the ups and downs of weight loss, not just from a post athletic standpoint, but also from a male perspective and also how weight loss and wellness impacted his health and other aspects of his life. I'm so excited about you guys being here today. I really am. We I'm too. thrilled. I'm thrilled. Now, just as a di disclaimer, please know there is three of us in this studio, okay? I am not playing the role of myself and my sister. <laughs> we just sound identical. So if you are doing this audio style, it's going to sound, sound kind of like, well, weird, okay? Um, what's crazy, it freaks me out too. She's a patient at our office and when she checks in and she's getting her vital signs done and she's answering the questions with my nurse, I'm like, oh my God, it sounds like me checking in. It's so weird. 
So in an earlier episode, we talked about the prep steps and we referred to the last step in the prep acronym, which is preparation. We're going to call it prep. And we're going to talk about what most individuals perceive prepping to be and how you can set your own pace when it comes to food and activity prepping and how prepping can change through the different stages of your weight loss journey. Now, in What's Eating You, I refer to the squirrel. We're going to talk about him real quickly. Our trusty little rodent friend who is just relentless about his food prepping for the long winter months. He goes through painstaking efforts. He makes sure he can muster up all before this upcoming famine. He gets everything together. He's very methodical, very got a lot of resolve, a lot of rigor, vigor, excuse me, and it's unmatched. It really is. And so when it comes to proactive planning and food prepping, we need to be unwavering and persistent like our furry little friend. We need to make every effort to create a successful plan for the long haul. Now, in an article that was written by ladieswholift.com, mastering the art of meal prep is simple. The best way to stay consistent with an eating plan that works for you is to have a game plan. Set yourself up for success in that game plan and stick to the freaking plan. Enter meal prep. Now, Lamar, you know, being part of a competitive team, Without a game plan, a strategy for success, the likelihood of winning would be highly unlikely, right? Correct. We're not going to put any money on that. No. (laughs) (laughs) So one of the things I discussed in the chapter on what's the plan, Stan, is the meal prepping is either going to be your favorite pastime or you're going to loathe just the thought of preheating the oven. But prepping doesn't have to be this way, does it? Prepping is a mindset not just an activity and prepping can mean different things to different people and it can change through the course of your journey. And that's really where we're going to park and talk a little bit today. So guys, what I would like to ask you first and foremost is what and when did you have your moment of resolve or like I I like to call it the aha moment. And Tracy, let's start with you. Well, Kelly, you've known me my whole life, obviously. Yes, I have. Now you can hear how our voices sound so much alike. <laughs> it's freaky. I, um, unlike my sister, I've struggled with my weight my whole life. Um, but I clearly remember a moment in 2018. We were on a family vacation. It was a cruise. What do you do on cruise ships? You you eat your way through vacation, right? I was the heaviest I had ever been in my life. And About the fourth day, it hit me. I didn't feel good. I didn't like the way I looked. I didn't like that. I didn't have a whole lot of clarity. I wasn't sleeping well. And I was tired of eating. And I could literally not wait for my vacation to end so that I could get home and get started on something. That's amazing. That's an aha moment. It really is. I mean, that's your moment of resolve. You have to be at that point. You really do. So now, Lamar, coming from a different background, a physically demanding background in college, and then when you started with work, when did you finally get the aha moment when you realized it was like a now or a never kind of thing? In the cardiologist's office. <laughs> well, yeah. that's, that's uh, always a place where it can happen, right, for sure. Right, happens, <laughs> yeah. And, and he just, you know, we had been trying to get my blood pressure under control, and I was on two medications, three yeah. medications, four medications, wow. and nothing was working, and... He just told me something's got to change and it just hit me. I I can't keep living like I'm living. It's not going to, it's not going to work. It's going to end badly. So you had to do something. And it's, and it's, it, and when you have that aha moment, it's like a light bulb that goes off and it really does create this, like everything shifts. It's almost like you've got these rose colored glasses on and it's like they come off and you can see everything a little bit differently. That's so awesome. So awesome. Remember folks, until you get to that aha moment, the struggle bus may be stopping at your house frequently. So just plan on being at the bus stop if you don't get your aha moment, okay? That's what you got to work on. Meal prepping is a state of mind. It may require an activity of some sort, but it is your planning for prepping that sets you up for your greatest success. So let's talk about some tips that can help you to set your mind up for some amazing success. And since these guys have done a lot of prepping in every shape or fashion, Um, same as me, we're going to actually talk a little bit about these tips and what they've done and how that looks for them. And maybe these are some things that you can kind of, uh, have some takeaways and glean from. So the first tip is keep it simple, sweetie. Okay. You do not have to make a organic beef Wellington in your prep week for your first week. Okay. You don't, you don't have to make chicken lasagna homemade in your first week. Okay. You don't. All right. 
Start simple with a few meals and then build your momentum. Remember the small steps make a big difference. That's something we discussed in an earlier episode and it can be monumental here, okay? Now get some quick wins and you work from there. I always look, look, I don't care if you do one meal a week, that's prepping, start somewhere. Of course, know your skill level too. That's where perception comes in so that you don't set your up, set yourself up for a steep fall. Now, guys, what would you like to add here is just from a, your personal experience, um, Tracy, with just keeping it simple, sweetie? <laughs> well, when I had that aha moment, I had my <laughs> sister. I remember this. And my brother-in-law <laughs> come remember. for an entire day on Sunday to. I think I sent you a grocery list. Yes, you yeah, did. I and did. Lamar and I spent the entire day Saturday grocery shopping in preparation for our preparation. <laughs> but. It was incredible to see how it all came together, how you use disposable stuff to make it easy and just watching you do do it helped. But then she went home <laughs> and I had all these amazing meals to eat. And then I, we ate them all. And Actually, then I was I like, think Parker was eating some meals <laughs> yes, too. Yes, yes, he was like, this stuff's good. That's my son. <laughs> but what happened was I had that uh-oh moment. I was like, uh-oh, I'm alone now and I have to do this on my own. And I'm that Emerald's worst fear in the book. <laughs> I'm not a good cook. I don't like to cook, but I knew I loved the concept. I loved how yes, I yes. ate those amazing meals for that week and didn't have to think about it. So I did what I knew. I literally just boneless, skinless chicken thighs in the oven with olive oil and seasoning, steamed broccoli. Absolutely. Voila, four meals. Two lunches for him, two lunch or a lunch for him, a lunch for me, dinner for him, dinner for me. Um, grilled uh, shrimp with seasoning. And so the first couple of weeks, it was very simple stuff I already knew how to do. And then what I shared with my sister, Kelly, was that then this ROI happened. Like I started seeing the return on my investment. And then I was like, okay, let me roll up my sleeves and really get into this fun Yes, these fun yeah. recipes. Yeah. And they were delicious and easy. And so yeah. that's my part. They were not overwhelming. And you, and you did you see what you did was you started simple, right? And you built yourself up so that you could have the success that you were looking for. Right now, Lamar, how did how did you fit into this? I know you consume the meals. I was a but recipient. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so obviously, I didn't have a lot to do with the cooking. Uh, but I guess from my standpoint, the reason this worked so well for me, or I don't know if this is a tip or not, but it was just, it took the uh, logical reasoning and what you're doing and your, and your uh, choices instead of making emotional ones. Like if I normally went to work one day, we only have one person who can go get work out. But so it would, if I didn't bring anything, I had to right. get, I had to get whatever Somebody's they were getting. Somebody's going to church's fried chicken. Right, right. I know, I know. So it, that emotional, like, Ooh, oh yeah, that sounds good. You know, it took right. that away. It, right. it made, made it all logical choices. Look, this is the choices we're going to make. And it kept me from having to make emotional choices at work. That's amazing. This is one of the things we talk about in the book. We talk about food being a function. It is a function. Okay. It's not, it's not your friend. It's not your buddy, okay? It's a function. And so that's where that logical right. component came in. All right, our second tip is avoid the boredom trap. Now, I know you guys can relate to this one, um, and I know you guys can too. Uh, changing up the meals, the recipes, ingredients can keep you anticipating not only eating the meals, but believe it or not, it can even make it exciting preparing them as well. Um, I know Tracy during the weight loss journey, how did you, what did you do to kind of prevent the boredom trap? Because after a while, we know prepping is going to get a little boring. One of my favorite prepping weekends was when I did it with Parker, my son. Oh, nice. He was my sous chef. He did all my <laughs> chopping. Was he we, the dishwasher too? Not really. No, okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, no. That would Which have been is the another reason I'm not so. a big fan of cooking, but <laughs> I, I had a friend. We talked the whole time. It was such a wonderful engagement between the two of us. And the time went by so fast. And when Kelly and I were talking about this, I shared with her that you have to invite friends to the party. It was like, that's so awesome. Preparing for a party, but that your guest come and help you do the preparation. And it made it, it made, it was very enjoyable. Well, and they, and they leave with party gifts. Exactly. <laughs> so they actually leave with their party gifts of the week. And then you know what? They just keep thanking you over and over again. 
because you see them at work again. They're like, oh, I just ate this. It was so good. And then you can keep talking about it. And, well, you know. Parker got a whole week's worth of free meals oh, he out loved of that. it. So. He loved that. <laughs> he, he was all over that. <laughs> they may not have lasted a week. Probably not. <laughs> but but he enjoyed that. What about you, Lamar? Uh, Especially at work. How does that how does that look at work when you kind of get into that same little, I'm bringing the same things? and It, it does, but it, it's, you know, you are a sum of your habits. Yes. So totally agree. So just the habit of having that and just grabbing one out of the, it, it, it almost didn't matter to me. I was like, you know, I was just glad to have something and not have to make that feel bad about ordering something I knew I shouldn't be eating. So right. it, to me, it was almost, it really didn't matter as long as I had something and I knew that I didn't have to make that choice. And I, and I knew I was eating good food. It, it was, it was fine. That's I awesome. To, I have to interject a quick story. Absolutely. Lamar's coworkers used to tease him because he never brought home cooked food for lunch leftovers. And they were like, well, does your wife not cook? <laughs> and so actually I think the food prepping made it look like, look, my wife's right. cooking. Again. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. But that's good. That's, I mean, you know, um, we go back to food as a function when you get into, you know, you, it takes 30 days, they said. What is it, 30 days or 90 days to create a good habit? Right. 30 well, however days long it takes better. you. <laughs> right. How long it takes could you. Could be different. But it does. And you can, either, you can either decide to make it a good habit or a bad habit. And so if you put those meals in the, in the refrigerator and you prep and you make food a function and you already have that ready, then you can get into that habit just as easy as you can get in the habit of driving through Wendy's drive through Okay. I mean, it's just as simple as that. Tetris for breakfast. This is our next tip of meal prepping for you. Now, make sure that you are prepping your breakfast as well. And what I mean by this is you, uh, this is what I do. I take a few items and I rotate them together to take the mental obstacle out of the game. Remember, not every meal has to be a big event, okay? Um, not every breakfast on Monday through Friday is a celebratory breakfast. Okay. So I literally have four or five items that I rotate in here during the week. And then on the weekends, maybe one day during the weekend, I might step out of the box a bit. Example, bold egg, organic, no sugar sausage, the same, no sugar sausage and an apple, an apple and an egg. I'm finally getting to use the logic that I didn't like to take in college. So if that equals that, then that equals that, you know what I'm saying? Okay. You get the gist. Anyway, I know much of this um, has changed for you guys, especially both of these guys have gone through bariatric surgery very successfully. They've long term maintained um, their weight loss. Um, so how does this how do you approach your breakfast? Well, I am not a breakfast person at all. Contrary to Lamar, who loves breakfast. Favorite meal of the day. Favorite mm -hmm. meal. Favorite you know, meal. There was there's a quick story when I was a kid. We had these uh, kitchen chairs that had cushions, and my mom was cleaning them one day. We all sat in the same chairs every <laughs> I time. I remember this. And she found two pieces of molded toast under my seat because I was like, I'm just going to hide these real quick so I don't have to <laughs> eat them before I go to school. And that has pretty much stuck with me until I became an adult and realized I was very sluggish, lethargic without my breakfast. But I I'm just not a breakfast person. And so I do a lot of what... Kelly mentioned, I like to grab quick stuff, you know, low sugar protein shakes. I was not getting enough protein, vital proteins. Mm -hmm. I put that powder in my coffee. So by the time I've even started to eat something, I've had almost 30 grams of protein just with vital proteins in my coffee. That was huge for me. Right. Because you, you know what? You don't have to change who you are. If breakfast is not your meal, you know what? Kelly, don't make me eat breakfast. We're not going to make you eat breakfast. But you know what? Get the protein some kind of way, if it's in a protein shake or if it's protein powder in your coffee or what have you. Now, what about you, Lamar? What do you do for breakfast? How do you handle that? I'm lucky at work. We have a little kitchen close to my uh, my office. So that is the one thing that I kind of do. So I normally bring some eggs and fruit, and I'll eat an egg or two and <laughs> scramble an egg or two and eat eat some fruit or something like that. So, so you have I'm, a full kitchen? That's yeah, pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. We do too, but we don't, I, I mean, I don't use it. I'm like very like, I'll bring my boiled egg because it's just yeah. easy right. and, you know, and usually have other things that are coming up right. as soon as I walk in the door. So I don't have time to cook an egg, Very, but true. I like that you can do that. Right. And if that's the meal that you really 
enjoy, you're not giving that up as part of right. that meal prepping process. You know, I could eat breakfast every meal of the day. I would be totally fine. And there, you know, I mean, really, in all honesty, every meal you want to have that proactive mindset and making sure that you like, for instance, before I walk out of the door in the morning, in my mind, I've already gone walk through my breakfast, my snack, my lunch, and then I've already know what we've got planned for dinner. It's not because I'm I'm obsessed with food. What I'm trying to do is mindfully proactive plan my day so that I can alleviate any potential reactive choices that may come my way. Um, you know, cause if we don't have lunch at work that day, then I need to be prepared. I need to bring something with me because usually we have salads every day. Um, so the next tip is nothing wrong with the quickest route. Now there are a lot of shortcuts that you can implement when you're working on meal prepping for the week. Rotisserie chickens are my go-to. I use these guys all the time. Sometimes we'll eat half of the rotisserie just with that in a salad, and that might be a meal one day of the week. And then I'll take that other half of that rotisserie chicken. And let me tell you, a number of the recipes that are in the prep for it steps, that six week course in the book, um, I use rotisserie chicken. So for instance, the buffalo chicken salad is um, the sausage and shrimp and chicken uh, sausage and shrimp jambalaya. Um, and you can easily put it in the cauliflower fried rice as well. So you can just, you know, cube it up, debone it, and then you can um, throw it into a lot of the recipes that you have. And getting veggies sometimes already chopped and ready to go is a great shortcut too. Um, you know, a lot of, even Walmart, a lot of the um, higher end, uh, like Whole Foods and Fresh Market and all those guys, they were really doing that to start off with. They were charging mm, a little bit for that. Um, you're always going to pay a little upcharge there because they're cutting for you. <laughs> um, it's not that hard, but whatever. Anyway, but I think some of these other chain stores are starting to kind of catch on, and they also have avail have it available now, which is really awesome. So do you guys do any kind of shortcuts that you would like to share with our group today? Obviously, I should not encourage <laughs> drive through. No. But not on this, not on this podcast, girl. <laughs> but I am a big fan of Chick Fil A because they do have some incredibly healthy choices. Their salads come with vinaigrette. Their grilled chicken, they have their grilled chicken nuggets, which yes. I love, mm -hmm. and that helps when I'm like, I've walked in the door for work. My whole day got derailed. I'm now working through lunch. I find myself at two o'clock, haven't eaten. It, it's you know, what's that? Oh my gosh, I have an emergency situation, eat type. Emergency thing. people. Right. <laughs> um, protein shakes are huge for me. Yes. I always have one just hanging out in my fridge so that I'm not eating chips or cookies. I grab that protein shake and I've gotten it, even if it's probably more carbs than I want it to, want to be in it. It's still something that is not full of sugar and an unhealthy well, choice. Out of the choices, it's the better choice right. for you to make, right. which is really that's proactive. Right. You know, what about you, Lamar? And that's the same way. I, I, I like to have fruit around and that way okay. it's maybe some fruit is sh sugar, maybe more than I should, but like she's saying, it's better than grabbing a handful of cookies Absolutely. and eating that. So a couple grapes, strawberries, something that, you know, to Absolutely. Snack Absolutely. And you know, a lot of the berries, like your strawberries, your blackberries, your blueberries, uh, raspberries, all those guys are going to be a lower glycemic index. Mm. Um, please stay away from bananas. Okay. Um, if you can, <laughs> please. I love frozen. I love freezing my blueberries. It's like yes. eating a popsicle. Yes, it is. It is. But it, it kind of hurts your teeth a little <laughs> bit too, though. You got <laughs> <laughs> So next one is when in doubt, we're going to source out. Okay. And that's right. There are plenty of options out there that will either send ingredients to your door. If going to the grocery is just a bit of a stretch for you. Um, just with your current schedule or, you know, what you got going on with your life at the moment and even getting prepared meals that fit into that HER acronym. Remember, that's the HEAT, EAT and REPEAT acronym. And that's what we do a lot with those prepping steps that we do during the course of that six week course. And don't let the traditional method of prepping affect your chance of long term successes here. I know that you both have uh, tried outsourcing a bit. Um, through the weight loss and wellness journey, what would be some good suggestions here uh, that would help the listeners today? What do you think that they could really uh, take away from this? Lamar and I have really enjoyed Factor 75. You have gluten-free options, keto options, calorie uh, restriction. restriction options. 
delicious. They come iced down so they hadn't been frozen. Nice. So they're fresh. 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 Mm-hmm. And um, I mean, really tasty. And what I like about it is I get home and instead of eating my way through my pantry while I cook, I just grab it, heat it, eat it. And you're done. I'm done. Right. You heat, eat, repeat. Okay. Right. I heat it, I eat I right. heat it up, I right. eat it, I'm on to my next task. It's just a function. Right. Again, just a function. And, and whatever one you use, it's it's to have the choice of how they prepare it is what I would look for. You know. Yeah. And like what you're looking for as far as the diet you're following, right. what you're right. trying to accomplish, that kind of thing. I right. mean, honestly, I'm gonna tell you quite frankly, um, the last few weeks, uh, just trying to prep for the launch party. Um, I've done a little bit more, not outsourcing as much as just kind of like shortcuts. Um, but this week my, my husband's actually going to be out of town next week. So I literally, I bought a week of the factors meals. I've got them coming. Um, and they'll be there because I, you know what, I'm taking a break. I don't have to cook for two people. Um, I can take a little bit of a break and I can actually change up my meal prepping so that mm-hmm. I can remove that boredom that we talked about previously as well, which right. works Absolutely. too. Now what the next tip, what worked then may not work now kind of piggybacks on what we just talked about. But seriously, when we talk about wellness and weight loss in our journey, it's not a marathon. Okay. It, I mean, excuse me, it is a marathon. It's not a sprint. Remember it's your race. It's, it's your pace and meal prepping is not any different. This is no different. What worked at the start of the journey may not, it, it just may not longer work for you uh, based on time maybe or resources, cost, whatever the case may be. And changing things up around can often create a foundation for some long-term success. Obviously, traditional meal prepping, this is fixing the meals like we talked about earlier for the week, is the what most people are actually familiar with, okay? And when we talk about uh, meal prep, that's what everybody immediately thinks about, but there's meal prep is in your mind. Um, traditional meal prep, prep, excuse me, um, meal pickup. Uh, this is important for people who travel, like, um, knowing what restaurants have things Mm -hmm. available like Chick-fil-A or, you know, even places like, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give a shout out to our local here, coffee rainy. They make incredible salads. I had a patient that came in the other day. She said, Kelly, I don't have time to prep all my meals. So for lunch, what I do is I buy two salads. I break them in half. And now I have four salads for the week. I'm like, Ooh, can I, I'm taking that suggestion from you. That was amazing. So, you know, everything changes as you go. Right. And even the ones that are the her meals, you know, the heat eat repeal repeat meals. So guys, what role did prepping play? I'm going to ask first like successes. And then what were some of the obstacles, some of the things that maybe created challenges for you through the processes? When my entire family was in the house and I had to cook dinner every night, um, the 20 meals that Lamar said, I only really knew because he claimed, I said, I knew how to cook 20 and he said, you sure about that? You know, but anyway, spaghetti, you know, grilled chicken, but I came in famished. So I was, like I said earlier, I was working my way through my pantry with potato chips, cookies, the easy things, nuts, a lot like the fattening nuts that I could put in my mouth really quick to kind of thinking it was healthy, right? Mm -hmm. I'm feeding that monster. Mm -hmm. And while I'm cooking dinner, And then I would sit down and eat dinner. And I realized after a while, I'm like, oh, my gosh, I just ate 500 calories before I even sat down and ate dinner since I got home. And that's what made me realize food prepping was so transformational for our family is because it it eliminated that 500 calorie binging I was doing while I was cooking immediately. immediately. Isn't that crazy? That's so crazy. I know. So what about you, Lamar? I think the... It, obviously, it worked well. I loved having the good food, and uh, you know, and it more made than f- more than twenty meals, and more than twenty <laughs> meals. Yeah, because the spaghetti and noodles is not two meals. That's just one. Oh my god! So, so what? What I would say is, it, it works really well. I felt better. I, I had blood tests done after that. Man, all my numbers came down. It was great. That is incredible. Uh, the thing that, and and I think this is from a guy's perspective a little bit too, is. You know, we want to fix things. That's what we do. Ooh, that's so good. That's so, so good. to think that this is just going to fix everything and I'm going to do this for two months, man, I'm never going to want to eat a Reese's peanut butter cup again. That's that's not going to happen. You still going <laughs> to it's not going to fix that. But it, it it's makes the reality of, the, of what we're right, dealing with. Right. I mean, it is. It's the reality. And so, let, let me just say this. When you let the emotional monster out of the cage, which mm-hmm. we've 
Right. We've had, we, we've come, we're we've very familiar with him, right? Yeah. Um, that it's somebody that you always have to, it's, it's something that you have to always kind of deal with. It's yeah. always going to be there. Um, so you have to, if you keep glass checking him and you keep that functionality of right. prepping and proactive mindsets and planning, it minimizes his ability to do anything in your life. Right. It really what does. Food prepping also does is that it's not like you started a diet, like, and right. then you got derailed and you're like, okay, well, forget it. I'm not going to go back on this diet. Food prepping is really, it's not a diet. It's a way of life. It's a way of just organizing yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. I actually, what was really funny is I had a patient this week that came in and she's like, I read your book from cover to cover. When she started that, I was like, hey, <laughs> I kind of, I kind of was like, oh, okay. And she's like, I loved it. She said, it was amazing. She said, and I, I, I did the, I, I started on the prepping and she said, I did the first two weeks. She said, and I have to tell you, I, I like cooking my meals every night. And she said, so what I did was I just, I just decided to like, I'm doing your meals and I, and she had a high cholesterol and high, um, triglycerides. So she couldn't do a lot of the beefier meats and stuff like the hamburgers and the meatloaf and that kind of thing. And so she said she kind of changed some of the meats up a little bit and changed a few of the recipes around. She lost seven pounds in a month. Yes. Wow, that's she amazing. lost seven pounds in a month. But what she said was so amazing. She said, Kelly, this is my medicine. Mm -hmm. I don't want to take cholesterol medicine. I do not want to be put on high blood pressure medicine. So this and exercise are my medicines. And I was like, Oh, let me write that down. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Right. I write stuff down everywhere. I got little notes everywhere at work now because I just that stuff always hits me. I'm like, oh, I want to want to I want to glean that. I want to keep that. I have to say, if I can interject, Kelly, Absolutely. after having surgery, the food prepping and the food preparation is what really has allowed me to maintain. Because you hear stories about people who have gone through the bariatric surgery where, okay, after two years, after three years, they gained all of their weight back. Yes. I've actually lost a couple extra pounds. Why? I'm preparing in advance for what I'm going to eat every day. Huge. Absolutely. Huge. And I, and I even actually talk about this in the book is that I do have patients that come into my office and, you know, one of the things I'll ask is, you know, they've had the surgery or they're planning on the surgery and I'm like, okay, well, what plan do you have in place? And, oh, I'm just going to do, you know, yeah. something they don't have any, they don't have a plan. Right. And so they're going in this thinking that it's going to solve everything. Right. Like you said, Lamar. Yep. You're still going to want a Reese's cup every now and then. That's, That's not it. going away right. until they come out with that pill, guys. Right. <laughs> you're going to want the Reese every now and then. OK, right. but the fact of the matter is, if you don't put that plan in place, even before surgery, even mm -hmm. before you start a medication or something like that for weight loss, the weight loss surgery and the medication without the prepping or the, the changes in your eating and your exercise are literally yo-yos. They're just yo-yos. So one of the new analogies I use with my patients, and I'm always coming up with new ones. They're like, okay, what is it today, Kelly? This is the analogy of the week. And uh, I said, guys, all right, you want, you want to be on this medicine. This medicine is like a hammer. All right? You want to be in a smaller house. You want to downsize. You want a tiny house. Right. Okay? Without the hand, with the hammer and nothing else, you're not going to be in the house. You may have the appearance that you're getting there, when it's all said and done, there's no, there's no house because you didn't put anything, any supplies into it. And I said, that's where the eating and the exercise come along. That helps you to build that, that, you know. right. So, all right. So, um, so do you guys have any additional suggestions or any additional insights that you'd like to share with our listeners? Just like gold nuggets, uh, the Willy Wonka ticket, something like that, that you'd like to give them as a takeaway today. I'm not a fan of exercise. <laughs> This is not an exercise podcast. Yeah. There you go. You're good. <laughs> but but um, a friend that went through the surgery journey with me, she caught me one day and she goes, Tracy, I was like gaining weight again. And then Dr. Taylor said, start walking, start walking. Yep. And so Lamar yep. and I literally two days or three days in a row, one weekend walked just two miles, two and a half miles. Boom. Overnight, I dropped three pounds and I'm like, okay. <laughs> this is legit the the and it doesn't have to be extraordinary it, it doesn't does 
Mm -mm. It's just, you know, walk around the block a couple of times. Move more. Yes. Move more. I'm on the second floor of my office. And so I will go down the stairs to use the restroom to come back up the stairs to my office. And I I go to the bathroom right around the corner. Yes, there is. And I go to the bathroom (laughs) a lot during the day. And I was getting in 12 to 15 flights a day just doing that. That's amazing. That's see, that's the kind of stuff that that's a proactive mindset, though. Okay, so we are going to walk three times this week, two miles each time. That is a plan. Okay. Um, you know, for me, and I know exercise is a little off topic, but planning for that is kind of a, a prep in it of itself is that when I'm, when a COVID hit and then I moved my exercise to my house, you know, you always have a little concern when you do that, but I love my Nordic. And so for me, I'm mentally and for the beginning of the week, I'm like, okay, I've church this day. I've got this going on this day. These are the days that I'm going to be on, on my, my Nordic and I'm going to get my, you know, view of Italy or my view of Sweden or whatever. And that helps me to kind of stay scheduled because otherwise you're always going to come up with a, an excuse yes. or a rationalization. What about you, Lamar? What's your Willy Wonka gold ticket for these well, guys? I don't think it's, it's a, it's a big secret. We talked about it earlier. I think it's, it's coming up with good habits because to me, habits are like compounding interest. The, the more you do them, and the more you stick with them, yep. the more they're going to, they're going to give you a, a, a return. Uh, Bad habits will do the same thing also. Absolutely. Absolutely. So just start, you know, even if, like you said earlier, even if you do one or two meals a week, just get on a one or two exercises a week. Just Something. get in a routine and then just add to it, add to it, add to it. And it will. It you don't want to have to have this, the house already built. Right. What you need to do is put a little bit of time each day into building that house so that when you turn around, you can see that transformation. Right. Yeah. Yes. Right. So I'm, I'm sorry. I did not mean to derail and say exercise. Oh, you're say, funny. Oh my say, God. <laughs> I would say for me, I travel a great deal for work. Yes. Mm-hmm. I have a very active work schedule. A plan B is essential. That's my golden ticket. Absolutely. I know I'm going to be traveling this week. I can't so, bring my meals with me. Mm-hmm. What is my plan so that I'm not, but it's going still a plan, right? right. It's a plan. That's the key. Yeah. I have to always have a plan. A, Don't a wait plan till you B. get there for sure. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And and that is, and I think with everything, it's like you're, you're traveling a lot. We talked about you being at a desk job. One of the things I tell some of my patients is like, they're like, I had a patient the other day. She was like, I work 60 hours a week at a desk. I'm like, okay, well then you can get 60 minutes of work in. And she looked at me like I had three heads. And I looked back at her like she had three heads. <laughs> And she's like, well, what do you mean? And I said, okay, so every hour on the hour for one minute, you're going to do some squats for 30 seconds. You're going to do some push-ups against the wall. Maybe you're going to take the heaviest book in your desk and you're going to start doing some, some bicep uh, curls. You know what? Uh, in an eight hour day, that's eight minutes of work in a 40 hour week. That's 40 minutes of work. And since you work 60 minutes, 60 hours a week, that's 60 minutes of work for you. And she was kind of like, <laughs> Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you really are the Medea of weight loss. <laughs> of but course I am. You made it simple for her. Yeah. You have to break it down. Right. Yeah. You have to break you it down. Break it down. Well, and here's the thing. You have to identify when rationalization, i.e. excuses, are, are monopolizing your thoughts. Okay? And that can impede your aha moment. Well, I can't do it because of this. Well, if I had this, I could do this. Those are all rationalizations that are going to keep you from reaching the goal that you're looking forward to reaching. You know what I'm saying? I'm so grateful to Thank have you, you guys here today and able to spend some time with both of them in the studio. It's just been awesome. They have incredible tenacity and drive in their weight loss journey. And I pray it provides our listeners um, maybe more motivation to make incredible changes to their wellness and weight loss journey. You guessed it. We have takeaways you're not getting out of here without any homework, okay? You knew that off the bat. So here's what we're going to do. What I want you to work on this week is I want you to t- really look at the perception you have about your current meal prep situation and how can you change that narrative so that you can get a better ROI. It was so funny that you said that because it's actually in my notes for today. ROI is return on investment. So what can I put into this where I'm going to see some results from that? And then, of course, what rationalizations, i.e. excuses, have we been using that are sabotaging our wellness and weight loss goals? Now, if you're creating avenues for workarounds, 
glass check yourself, okay? That means you're using excuses or rationalization and make it right to avoid any negative spiraling in that journey, okay? What expectations have you placed on yourself in relation to prepping? Are they realistic? Um, have you placed your, yourself on into this like potential disaster because you trying to do beef Wellington on the first week? I mean, really, what is it coming down to? And then lastly, what preparation can you work on this week? Like Lamar said, even if it's a small step, maybe I'm only going to do one or two meals so that I can kind of get my feet wet and, oh, I do know how to boil water now. So maybe I can do something else other than noodles <laughs> um, just to sustain the, ourselves long term in that wellness and weight loss journey. So this is all the time that we have for today. You guys have been great. Thank you. Thank Tracy. you for Thanks having for us. Lamar. Oh, I love them. This was fun. Thank you all for spending time with the Hangry Game Nation. <laughs> Um, thankful to have them in the studio today. Had such a great time. You um, brought really incredible insight into the discussion today, just about the mindset to prep and how we need to be willing to work really within our current situation. And are we um, are we in a bloom where we're planted? You know, we're not always in the same situation in our life that we might be on a day to day basis. So we need to be able to kind of you know, adjust where we need to, including in our meal prepping. Guys, have a great week. Um, head over to prepforit.com. We have some new recipes out. Remember, we try to put one out every week so you have some new stuff to look at. If you don't know your way around the kitchen and you do feel a little intimidated by some of those utensils that reside in your island drawer, you never really played with them or looked at them, they just look nice there, then please, please, I... I beg you, head over to the website and check out the Kitchen's Essential video. I'm going to show you what the utensils do. I'm going to teach you how to do some basic stuff because I want you to be empowered to have success with this. I really do. I think your success helps us with our success, right? Um, so we want no rationalization this week. <clears throat> Excuses. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, remember, this is your race. It's your pace. Hangry Game Nation. We are on the losing side. You like that? I know. I like it too. All right. I'll see you next week. Y'all have a great week and I'll talk to you soon.